Hello and welcome to today's Doves for Peace TV program on the sacred geometry of flowers and the flower of life. My name is Cynthia Kitely Lee. My candle is lit and I would like to start with some excerpts from a poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow that touches on the sacred aspects of flowers. Wondrous truths and manifold as wondrous God hath written in those stars above, but not less in the bright flowerets under us stands the revelation of his love. Bright and glorious is that revelation written all over this great world of ours, making evident in our own creation, in these stars of earth, these golden flowers. And the poet, faithful and far-seeing, sees alike in stars and flowers a part of the self-same universal being which is throbbing in his brain and heart in all places then and in all seasons flowers expand their light and soul like wings teaching us by most persuasive reasons how akin they are to human things. <clears throat> I am the uh, founder and administrator of the Mystical Order of the White Rose, which was founded in 2008. Our website is www.mysticalwhiterose.com and we are an online community that serves mystics, monastics, contemplatives, creatives, healers, visionaries, and evolutionaries. The Mystical Order of the White Rose is culturally and spiritually linked with mysticism, interspirituality, traditional and modern monasticism, and the reemergence of the divine feminine. It is also an offshoot of two off-planet orders, the Order of the Elohim and the Order of Melchizedek. I have studied, practiced, and been involved with many aspects of spirituality, both traditional and alternative, for the past 50 years. One of the founders of interspirituality, Brother Wayne Teasdale, says, in a nutshell, interspirituality means that when you have entered the world of the heart, the question of who is right or wrong with regard to belief or creed is pretty much irrelevant. All traditional Western monastic orders and most of the modern Western monastic orders and communities embrace and honor multiple faith paths and spiritual traditions. The mystical order of the White Rose is not Christian identified, however, and it seeks to be a spiritual resource for the growing population of millions of people who describe themselves as spiritual but not religious as well as people of goodwill who do have religious affiliations, but who resonate with the energies and intentions of the mystical order of the White Rose. Here is a quote from Galileo, a 17th century Italian physicist, mathematician, astronomer, and philosopher, one of those Renaissance men, 
who was found guilty of heresy by the Catholic Church's holy office because, because of his view that the earth revolved around the sun rather than the sun around the earth. He recanted and was kept under house arrest for the last nine years of his life. Here's what he has to say about sacred geometry. The universe cannot be read until we have learnt the language and become familiar with the characters in which it is written. It is written in mathematical language and the letters are triangles, circles, and other geometrical figures without which means it is humanly impossible to comprehend a single word. Until recently, sacred geometry has been a sacred science that very few people knew about other than high initiates in ancient and modern mystery schools and the high priests of modern science, including physicists, mathematicians, and cosmologists. Thanks to the popularity of Dan Brown's book, The Da Vinci Code, and the availability of information on the internet, sacred geometry is much more widely known now, especially as it relates to sacred architecture. The sacred geometry of flowers relates to specific geometric aspects of flowers and spiritual interpretation of those aspects. If you look closely, you can see certain repeating geometric patterns in flowers. Three petals here, five there, a spiral unfurling. Plants can be categorized according to the shape and number of their blooms. And this not only has value for botanists, there's also information being communicated in these forms. For instance, it is known that all five petaled flowers produce edible fruit, such as oranges, apples, and cherries, whereas three or six fold plants are often poisonous or reserved for medicinal uses. The number of flowers, <clears throat> excuse me, the number of petals in a flower is often one of these following numbers, three, five, eight, 13, 21, 34, or 55. Lilies have three petals, buttercups have five, the chicory has 21, and the daisies often has 34 or 55 petals. On the heads of sunflowers, you can see two series of curves, one winding in one direction and one in the other. The number of spirals not being the same in each direction. The number of spirals in general is either 21 and 34, 34 and 55, 55 and 89, or 89 and 144. The same thing is true of pine cones. They have either eight spirals from one side and 13 from the other, or five spirals from one side and eight from the other. The number of diagonals on a pineapple is also eight in one direction and 13 in the other. These numerical patterns belong to what is called the Fibonacci sequence. One, two, three, five, eight, 13, 21, 34, 55, and so on where each number is obtained from the sum of the two preceding numbers. Keith Critchlow 
a well-known geometrist and the author of the book, The Hidden Geometry of Flowers, says in a short video on the subject, flowers are our ancestors by millions and millions of years and they gave us the breath that we are breathing right now. The video is only five minutes long and I'll put the link up in the chat room uh, area. Critchlow sees flowers as teachers of symmetry and geometry or the eternal, the eternal verities, as Plato called them. Critchlow believes flowers can be viewed as sources for remembering, as triggers that awaken our inner recognition and awareness, even if only unconsciously, of the basic geometry and divinity that underlies all existence. No discussion of the sacred geometry of flowers would be complete without talking about what has become known as the flower of life. This is a geometric image formed by seven or more evenly spaced overlapping circles, which create more circles as well as petal shaped, or one might say fish shaped, Vesica Pisces. I'm going to uh, show you. This is a huge uh, version, and it doesn't capture the entire circle of the flower of life, but it does give you a clear uh, perception of the overlapping circles and the uh, flower petals and vesica pisces, these things that uh, are found throughout the flower of life. I uh, don't have the technical capabilities to provide a lot of visuals, but I do have what I call my sacred geometry toy. And as you can see, it is formed by overlap, overlapping half circles in this instance, but these are all interlinked. This sort of gives you an idea of some of these geometric formations. Here we just have it's all nice and flat. And here we have the classic shape of a spaceship. <laughs> and here, if I pull it out, we have an ovoid, almost a, uh, almost a sphere, but a bit more oval. And the earth is more ovoid or oval than a, a pure circle, from what I understand. Have that. And, and then this is uh, very much a flower shape, but done with geometry and simple lines. Let's see if I have any other. Yeah, this is uh, this is the classic flower of life image in a much on a much smaller scale. But you can see the complete image, and you can find these on the on the internet. Just just uh, pull up flower of life images, and you find all sorts of beautiful ones in a variety of colors. The flower of life is considered by many to be the most powerful pattern of creation. The pattern or form from which all objects and creatures found in material form on our planet emerged. 
It is an image that has been known and found in the cultures of China, Greece, Egypt, and even Japan, as well as in cultures that are uh, earlier than these. The flower of life is credited with being the template for other sacred geometric images that have appeared in varied religious and tradition and spiritual teachings. These include the seed of life, the image of the seed of life, the egg of life, the fruit of life, and the tree of life. And I think I have, yeah, there we go. This is an, an image of the egg of life. And this is an image, oops, isolated out, of the seed of life. So just to give you a quick peek, <clears throat> I have uh, two links, and again, I'll be sharing them in the chat room um, that will give you some wonderful uh, imagery, um, graphics, and texts that uh, go deeper into the flower of life. Drunvalo Melchizedek, who is a modern mystic shaman and medium, has been a leading figure in bringing the flower of life image and its sacred symbolism to a larger public. He has written two books on the flower of life and has taught numerous workshops about it since 1985. Mm. The books are The Ancient Secrets of the Flower of Life, volumes one and two. Combined, they have over 600 pages of material involving the uh, spiritual interpretation of these figures. Since very few people are going to be interested enough in this subject to purchase and read those two books and their 600 pages, I'm going to give you uh, a YouTube video link uh, that will provide some good background. Again, with lots of visual support that I, I cannot provide here in my humble home and TV studio. Um, now, Drunvalo claims that the flower of life <clears throat> depicts fundamental aspects of space and time. He believes that Met Metatron's cube may be derived from the flower of life pattern and that the platonic solids embedded within it are thought to act as the template from which all life springs. And, uh, Here's the link. I'll, again, I'll be putting up in the chat room. The video lasts about 44 minutes. As an aside, I attended a conference uh, in South Dakota in 1996. It was the first of uh, what they call the STAR conferences, hosted by a coalition of Native American Indians and lightworkers. And uh, I very much enjoyed his presentation, his talk. It was not on the flower of life. And I have to say that he has the most unusual aura I have ever seen. It, uh, there was an actually a clear image of a triangle surrounding his heart chakra. I do need to note that I don't regularly uh, or frequently see auras, but I do, I do see them now and then. So that was very interesting to me. 
Uh, I would like to let a less well-known spiritual teacher, Rabbi Azulai, have the final word on the flower of life, however. The flower of life has a very, he says, this is a quote from him, the flower of life has a very important meaning in Kabbalah. It is the beginning of all beginnings. It is the root of the tree of life, which explains the source of life and the meaning of creation on planet Earth. As taught by followers of the Kabbalah, the image of the flower of life possesses the vital energy of life, which can be explored and utilized by anyone who can tap into it. The symbol is often used by Kabbalists to strengthen their connection to the spiritual light of God and draw the vibrant living energy from the universe. So, and simply an image of this uh, focused on meditatively can be quite powerful. Uh, to resume, uh, he says that the symbolism of the flower of life is a good point of exploration for anyone interested in where we all came from. It explains the origin of the stars, planets, the entire universe, and life. It's a very sweeping statement. So here. As you can see from this necessarily brief, once over lightly, discussion of the sacred geometry of flowers and the flower of life, there are many, many sacred associations with the geometric patterns found in flowers, including the Fibonacci sequence, the Vesica Pisces, and the golden mean, as well as the seemingly simple and repetitive overlapping circles of the flower of life. Thank you for your interest in this subject and in our Doves for Peace TV free of charge programs. You can see previous programs on www Doves for Peace on youtube.com and learn more from our website at www.dovesforpeacevirtualtv.com. I will end this program with another quotation from Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Oh, how wonderful is the advent of spring, the great annual miracle of the blossoming of Aaron's rod, repeated on myriads and myriads of branches, the gentle progression and growth of herbs, flowers, trees, gentle and yet irrepressible, which no force can stay, no violence restrain, like love that wins its way and cannot be withstood by any human power, because itself is divine power. If spring came but once in a century, instead of once a year, or burst forth with the sound of an earthquake and not in silence, what wonder and expectation there would be in all hearts to behold the miraculous change. But now the silent succession suggests nothing but necessity. To most men, only the cessation of the miracle would be miraculous, and the perpetual exercise of God's power seems less 
wonderful than its withdrawal would be. I have uh, one more. Um, this is just a, uh, an excerpt from a poem called Spring Prayer by Ralph Waldo Emerson, an American transcendentalist from the uh, 19th century. For flowers that bloom about our feet, for tender grass so fresh, so sweet, for song of bird and hum of bee, for all things fair we hear or see, Father in heaven, we thank thee. Goodbye and God bless. Okay, I'm going to blow out my candle now. Mm.